Hi, I'm Dan, and today I'm reviewing Cloak and Dagger's two-hour premiere event. Uh, I just finished it, and I thought it was a really good start to the season. And I think what really makes the show stand out is the characters, the chemistry between Tandy and Tyrone, but also O'Reilly. I think that they really took her in a great direction in these first two episodes. Uh, at first, when we finished episode one, I was like, uh, this seems a little bit too on the nose, because like, oh, it's a big mystery who killed them, but like, obviously they've been building up mayhem this whole time in the promos and stuff. But then when we saw in episode two, they actually like got the call from Tyrone. I was like, oh, is something else going on? Because I had no idea there would be two of them. I don't know if that's from the comics or if they changed that or what, but that's that was a huge surprise to me. Uh, I don't know how I feel about it yet, but I'm excited to see how they deal with that. Uh, especially because when we saw O'Reilly talking to herself, I assumed it was in her head. So that I think they wanted you to assume that, and I think that was an interesting way to go. I don't know what's going on, but I'm intrigued to find out more. But let's take a step back and let's talk about each of the characters and sort of where they're at. Uh, Tandy, I think, was there was some very interesting stuff with her as her powers are sort of evolving and as she's dealing with the fallout of finding out about what happened with her dad and the domestic abuse. It's fascinating that while her mom seems to be on a better path, Tandy is the one who's really still reeling from all of this. And the fact that she is now sort of going through a lot of what Tyrone was going through in season one with this anger bubbling up and, and spouting off in different areas because she can't really deal with the direct problem and what happened with her own family in this issue. And the thing that I think really makes this two-hour premiere work so well is how we see our heroes make decisions that seem like maybe they could be the right mode, or at least you get where they're coming from, but they keep uh, making things worse for the people around them and for themselves. Where we have Tandy lashing out at this girl who is a victim, and you get why she feels this way, you get why she has this rage, and she just wants to shake her and tell her to change, but that's not how it works. Uh, and I think that that was a, a really relatable human moment, uh, and I, th I thought that that was really interesting. Meanwhile, we also have Tyrone, who is now in like his lowest point ever, and he is trying to make his city a better place, but he just keeps creating this cycle that uh, you know escalates things. And it's an interesting uh, sort of counterpoint to things like Batman or whatever, where it's like, oh yeah, they just come in and they punch the crap out of people, and they make the city a better place. But but do they? Um, and, you know, obviously there's been times where Batman has made things worse, too. But very often it's supposed to be like, you're on board with this vigilante justice. Whereas here it's like, man, I don't Tyrone, I know you're trying to do the right thing, but you really are making things worse. And he has that sort of guilt and weight on him no matter what. And the fact that he's making it even worse is very compelling. Uh, meanwhile, their connection together, Tandy and Tyrone, like I said, their chemistry is phenomenal, both as friends and potentially more, uh, and to a certain degree, I think that is what hurts Evita for me as a character. Uh, I am so much more on board with Tandy and Tyrone, and I'm just like, their connection is so strong that I'm like, how are you guys not even remotely really directly hinting at a uh, emotional connection? You still have Tandy seemingly without jealousy bringing up Evita all the time, like almost like he's a sister. Um, and so to me, that feels weird. Whereas I'm like the subtext and the clear on-screen chemistry and obviously the, the text of the comics is so clearly that Tyrone and Tandy should be together, but they're moving so slowly in that direction that it's a little bit frustrating and it makes Evita feel like an obstacle that is eventually just gonna go away. That said, I think that they gave her really good stuff in episode two. Uh, I think that her reaction was very earned. Like, she could have been annoying there uh, because she was sort of antagonizing Tyrone, and we do feel for Tyrone, but she had a good point. And especially because it's like, well, Tyrone, you could have just, like, left her a note or something. Uh, you didn't, if you really were worried about, like, you know, there's a whole thing where he's, like, trying to protect her, but he's not really thinking at all from her perspective. And I think the way they handled that was really interesting. If I was gonna have any criticisms of these two episodes, I do think it might be that things feel a little bit slow. There's no like clear antagonist until I guess now at the end of episode two. Uh, so it, it kind of leaves things in like, oh, we're vaguely trying to defeat gang warfare. Uh, but I do like that they have this sort of grounded antagonist because even though both of these characters have superpowers, a gun is still just as effective on them as it is on anybody else. So there is still that feeling of danger, even if they're not fighting superpowered beings. Beyond that, I, I'm not a huge fan of how they 
uh, use religion in this show. Uh, I like the idea in theory of having these themes of religion, but personally when they like straight up like have the religion like be proven, I don't really love that because I liked the idea of sort of being like, oh, some people have this voodoo culture, some people have Christianity. Uh, we're not going to say which is real, which it isn't, all that stuff. It's just beliefs and, and it matters to these people. But when they have, you know, him literally like spiritually, ap magically appear uh, to people in need, uh, to me, that feels like a step too far. And it's not a part of this world that I particularly enjoy. Uh, again, that might just be a personal thing. I don't know if anybody else agrees with me. I definitely appreciate how they bring in these various aspects of New Orleans culture. Uh, but to me, that just feels like a step too far. And it might just be something I have to get used to because it does seem pretty core to what the show wants to be. All that said, can't wait to see more Tandy and Tyrone. Can they please just like get together? <laughs> um, I know they're gonna dangle that for us for a long ass time, but I am surprised that we're into season two and we don't even have one of them having feelings for the other. I know they mentioned that they care about each other and all that stuff, but like, we're not getting any idea of jealousy or yearning or anything like that. And I need some of my shippery goodness, guys, uh, because I really do like these two. Uh, other than that, uh, let me know what you guys want from the season going forward. If you had any issues with it, if you're excited about anything particular, uh, love to hear from you guys in the comments below. This weekend, I am going to be diving into Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, giving you a whole bunch of reaction videos for that. I'm also considering doing something for In the Dark over on the CW. So stay tuned to Doing Okay.